So for years now, we heard from leaks and rumors that this iPhone 15 will finally have USB-C. And for a while, I didn't really believe it. We didn't know when it was gonna come out because Apple didn't say so, and they finally did, and I had my hands on it. After their keynote, I had a lot of questions about what types of things you could do with the base model iPhone 15. Like, can you connect it to an external microphone? What happens if you connected it to various different devices, like maybe a Nintendo Switch or even your Apple Watch? Well, in this video, I'm going through the different scenarios where USB-C can be applicable and kind of point out why this is such a game changer on the iPhone 15. So let's kind of start off with charging and see what happens when you connect the iPhone 15 to other devices for charging purposes. So we all pretty much know that the iPhone 15 can charge other devices through USB-C and what Apple really showed was other devices such as the AirPods Pro and also other iPhones. But let's go ahead and see what else it can do and how it works if you were to plug it into other devices. So these are the AirPods, the second generation. Of course, it has lightning at the bottom of a USB-C to lightning cable. Let's go ahead and see if it charges what happens. And as you can hear, it's charging. So, so this is the Apple Watch Series 8 that I've been rocking for a little bit now. So let's see what happens when you plug in your iPhone 15 to your Apple Watch. And let's bring this little puck thingy, this stupid little puck thingy that they give you instead of USB-C and connect it to the back. Well, and as you can see, the iPhone 15 is actually charging the Apple Watch Series 8. So if you are in a pinch and you need to charge your Apple Watch, you can actually do it with your iPhone 15. Let's say that you're gaming and you're on the go and you wanna charge your Nintendo Switch, which I have here. This is my favorite gaming machine over the PS5. But yeah, let's say that you're on the go and you want to charge it. Let's see how that goes. Let's go ahead, plug it right in, USB-C, and you can see it's not charging here. Let's go ahead and plug it into the charging port. What the heck? So it's charging, uh, it's actually charging my iPhone. So it's charging the iPhone. If I plug it into the N Nintendo Switch, it'll charge my iPhone. So it's at 72% and yeah, it's kind of interesting. I have a Nintendo Switch charging my iPhone 15 in 2023. That's crazy. So this is my other test. This is the Logitech MX Master 3. Let's see what happens when you plug it in to your iPhone 15. Go ahead, put it in here, connect the charger, and it's charging up the MX Master. You can tell by the glowing light here. All right, so that was definitely interesting. It's really cool that I can charge my Nintendo Switch. Well, let's kind of see what happens when you connect your iPhone 15 for the purposes of transferring data or connecting docks and things like that to the iPhone 15. The first thing I'm gonna do with it is connect a Samsung T5, an external SSD. Nothing is here, and I did try this before, and it does show up, so sometimes it does take a while. There's something to note. T7 popped up, so let's go ahead and click T7. And then I have the stuff that's already on the hard drive. So I do have a file called stuff, and I have my YouTube things over here. So let's say I go to video. I can see some of the last videos that I did. So this file here is 738 megabytes. Let's go ahead and play it. In this one, I'm gonna be doing an unboxing of the brand new iPhone 15. Completely the base. It does allow you to play it back fairly easy. Now I wonder what happens if I want to transfer it over to my iPhone. So if I hit select, go here, move it to another folder. So I'm gonna put it on my iPhone over here and it's just doing that move. Let's see how long it takes. So that's not bad for a file that was 738 megabytes. It's now locally stored on the iPhone. Uh, now I'm going to connect the iPhone 15 to this dock that I have from a brand called RayQ. As you can see with Dynamic Island display, it does show that it's connected to something. And you can see it's really old. The SD card in there was from a Blackberry, so it's kind of crazy. Which is pretty dope if you really think about it. It means that you can connect uh, your camera, for example. I'm just going to go ahead and connect my SSD over. So so, and see how that works. So let's see, it, oh, it does have the T7 as well, as you can see over here. I'm gonna go ahead and plug in this HDMI port over here. Oh wow, so I've connected it through HDMI over to the screen that I have off to the side. I can actually see the screen and it has pretty much zero latency as I am doing things like scrolling on the screen. Now this other test that I'm gonna do is something that I'm personally really excited for and if you are a content creator, you're gonna be excited for as well. So I have the Rode Wireless Go 2 here that I use for capturing audio. Sometimes I'm not really using it now. 
So I'm gonna quickly do an audio test. You let me know if you've noticed the difference. This is a quick audio test without the Rode Wireless Go. So yeah, you gotta let me know how this is sounding. Does it sound like I have very good audio? Only one way to find out, comment down below. All right, so just doing a very quick audio test with the iPhone 15. You let me know how it is sounding. Right now I am using the audio on my Rode Wireless Go 2. It should definitely give me better audio, but there's only one way to find out. Let me know in the comments down below what you think. So I've connected my Sony mirrorless camera to my iPhone 15. Quite easily, I was able to connect it directly to the camera and then also import the files to Lightroom where I edited the photos. This is very, very clutch for people on the go. So now I did do a small import with less than 20 photos. Then I moved on to around under 50 and still it was pretty quick. All right, so wrapping up the video, my final thoughts are USB-C on the base model iPhone 15 is still a game changer. Like it might not have the features of the Pro, which is 20 times faster than what I've showed you in this video. But at the same time, for a lot of users, a majority of users that will be buying this phone and you might wanna connect it to other things and charge other things, the USB-C port on this one with USB 2.0 speeds are still pretty good and quick enough for you to get things done whenever you need to. But if there's something that I didn't test that you want me to personally check out before you buy the iPhone 15 or any things that were not clear in general, make sure to comment down below. And while you're there, give the video a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. And I'll see you in the day in the life review coming later this week.